I think if you ask the question of what does net zero look like in your community context to 100 different leaders, you'd get 100 different responses. And I think that's a good thing. Um, but it can also be, you know, a challenge when you're thinking about, okay, well, how do we support these communities at a big level, um, given that they're also different, they have different priorities. Uh, but I think in like working on these topics, it's also really important to keep in mind that there's a lot of other priorities at the community level and net zero might not be the biggest. You know, I think often it's not like be pressing housing issues, um, like social challenges, uh, lack of clean drinking water on First Nation communities. Um, so there's like very real on the ground issues that aren't necessarily uh, in opposition to net zero. I think you can do projects that are holistic and achieve a lot of different co-benefits, um, but it has to be framed in the right way and it has to, you know, uh, take that approach in a meaningful way. Um, so I think the short answer is that it's very complicated, <laughs> but um, yeah, there's definitely a role to play. That's a big challenge is basically factors communities don't have control over, like enabling policy, like funding opportunities um, that can help them get to net zero. And that may be the biggest one in my mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, for a lot of communities, and once again, especially the smaller ones, you know, you have um, in a First Nations community, you have a lands manager who's already wearing 10 different hats, is expected to do a lot of different things, and there might not be a dedicated person on the energy file. And so um, expecting that community to make like really tangible, concrete gains toward net zero, that might be challenging as well. So there's um, a capacity issue, I think in a lot of communities, both in the sense of like physical resources, having the funding and the staff to, to do some of these things and, and to work toward net zero, um, but capacity also in technical expertise to you know, figure out how to approach these projects, um, especially if you're talking about renewable energy, they're pretty technically demanding. And so there's capacity gaps and I think communities uh, need support on those areas. I think the, the smart energy communities benchmark that Quest developed is a really useful tool. You know, something that's uh, adaptable to different community contexts, but still provides, you know, like solid methodology, indicators and processes for doing community energy planning work or for net zero planning work. Um, I think that's super important. But then also recognizing that, you know, developing tools, providing frameworks is really important to help communities with planning, but also a lot of communities might not have the capacity to even pick up a tool and use it. So I think there's also a role for Quest to play in um, providing direct support and working with communities one-on-one -on -one and doing things like needs assessments, um, but also just talking to communities, figuring out what they need, and then being flexible with, with Quest's approach and resources as to, okay, so this community is at this place in their net zero journey or their energy planning process, um, how can we support that? And taking a, a pretty flexible community-led approach to do so. I think that's a, a key role. And I think, you know, Quest already does that in a lot of ways. And I think that's one of the things that makes Quest effective. Mm -hmm.